Hello, uh, my name is Arsema Desta. I'm a registered nurse with DC Health COVID-19 emergency response team. Uh, I have been playing my part in fighting against the pandemic by educating uh, the community on COVID-19 vaccine, the safety, the effectiveness, and by administering vaccine to all eligible um, individuals. I'm currently a site lead at one of the eight COVID-19 service center throughout the district where my responsibility is to make sure uh, operations on site run smoothly and that all patients and staff remain safe. This is a moment that many parents and families across the country have been waiting for. It is important because it allows multi-generational households to ensure everyone in the household is vaccinated. It also allows those parents who are up to date on their vaccination the same opportunity to protect their children against COVID-19. Vaccine is the best way to protect you and your children from COVID-19 and help in the pandemic. So don't wait. Find a COVID-19 vaccination location nearest you and make it a family affair by getting everyone in your household six months and older vaccinated today. If you have questions about vaccination for kids under five, contact your child's pediatrician or a family physician. And now it is a pleasure to introduce the person who has been leading the way forward in our fight against the pandemic for our community, for a healthcare worker like me, and for our families. It was an honor to welcome him and the first lady to our clinic earlier today, the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. As you could tell, I didn't want to leave the clinic. Those children were wonderful. Thank you, Arsima, Ar and uh, for that introduction. And Jill and I were honored to visit your clinic today. <clears throat> we met with your fellow nurses and staff who are stepping up each and every day. And we met with families of young children, and there were about, I guess, 17, 18 families there waiting for their vaccine shots or have just gotten their vaccine shots. And finally, COVID-19 vaccinations for children uh, uh, over five years of age. Finally, some peace of mind. You know, this is, uh, our, should I should say, under five years. We got them over five years, but over five months to f six months to five years. And historic, this is a very historic milestone, a monumental step forward. The United States is now the first country in the world offer safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines for children as young as six months old. And the first time in our fight against this pandemic, nearly every American can now have access to life-saving vaccines. And we're ready. My administration, with the help of the CDC, has been planning and preparing this moment for this moment for a long time. Since I took office, we've been committed to making sure every parent has the opportunity to protect their children from COVID-19. We've secured enough doses, and we're launching a comprehensive effort with states, local health departments, pediatricians, family doctors, pharmacies, rural health clinics, community health cl centers, and other trusted messengers and partners to get the word out to get help to get shots in arms. Parents will soon be able to start scheduling an appointment and addressing vaccines at pediatricians' offices, children's hospitals, our largest pharmacies, Partners and uh, that are Walgreens, CVS, and Walmart are already scheduling appointments for later this week. And starting today, you can go to vaccines.gov and find information and appointments near you. More and more locations will be ramping up, and more vaccines are delivered to providers in your areas every day. These vaccines are safe and effective and are approved after extensive scientific review by the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the CDC. But I know some parents might have questions. I encourage you to talk to the doctor after you make a plan to get your child vaccinated for your children older than five years of age, for everyone else. Get your shots, get your boosters. And let's be clear, elected officials shouldn't get in the way and make it more difficult for parents who want their children to be vaccinated, who want to protect them and those around them. This is no time for politics. It's about parents being able to do everything they can to keep their children safe. <clears throat> Together, 
We've come to a long way in our fight against COVID with vaccines, treatments, and other tools that are widely available. More than 220 million Americans are fully vaccinated. More than 100 million Americans are boosted. Daily deaths due to COVID-19 are down 90 percent. And now vaccination is available for nearly every American. And we'll remain vigilant. We will make sure that this is not only a good day, but it's good from this point on. Proof that there is nothing beyond our capacity when we work together as the United States of America. I want to thank you again, Arsima, and uh, may God bless you, our health care workers across the country, and continue to, continue to step up and help put this pandemic behind us. And, Doc, did you want to say anything? You don't have to. I'm happy to, sir. Or just, All right. Uh, okay. Well. Whatever you like. All right. Yes. Chevron CEO's complaint today. He said that your administration has largely criticized the oil and gas industry and at times vilified it, and that the administration would need to take a change in approach in order to make progress on, on reducing energy prices and to increase supply. Do you have a reaction to that, sir? It's mildly sensitive. I didn't know they'd get their feelings hurt that quickly. Look, we need more refining capacity. This idea that they don't have oil to drill and to bring up is simply not true. This piece of the Republicans talking about Biden shut down fields, wrong. There are 9,000 of them, okay? So they, then we ought to be able to work something out whereby they're able to increase refining capacity and still not give up on transitioning to renewable energy. They're both within realm of possibility. Mr. President, if you were to decide to go for a federal gas tax holiday, do you believe Congress would support that? And how would you feel about the fact that those funds are used for something that is a big priority for you, repair of roads and infrastructure and all of that? Is that worth the We have a giant option? infrastructure bill we passed. A giant. $1.2 trillion, $200 billion. So you'd be worth, it would be worth it for you to... Sure. To, we, it's, not like, you know, it's not like before. Look, it will have some impact, but it's not going to have an impact on major road construction and major repairs. Sounds like you may have made a decision. Well, let me put it this way. I'm in the process. I'll have a decision before the week is out. But you asked me an explicit question about whether or not, how would I feel? Is it going to, in fact, make it difficult to maintain our roads? The answer is we have plenty of capacity to do that. And do you think Mr. President, 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 are you going to talk to President Xi before you make any decision on the China tariff? Do you want to have an engagement with him before you do any, anything on that? I plan on having a conversation with President Xi. We haven't set a time yet. Mr. President, any changes on your planned trip to Israel, given what's happened with the parliament? No. Mr. Anyway, President, I, uh, I think you spoke with Larry Summers recently, and he just said that in order to defeat inflation, you would have to accept higher unemployment. What would be your answer to that? Well, there's other, uh, there's other economists who don't think that's the case, and we're in the process of working through all of this. Have you received my briefing on the guns legislation? The senators say that they've gotten to a legislative text point. A very brief briefing before I walked in the room to make sure I say, let them announce it, and then I'll speak to it. Are you satisfied? Let them announce it, and I'll speak to it. Mr. President, are, Mr. President, are you uh, confident you have, I know you're looking for more money from Congress for the, this vaccine campaign and for, for COVID funding going into the fall. Uh, how much of the supply of vaccines for these small children uh, is there, and, and how many of the nation's kids will you be able to get vaccinated before you need more money uh, from Congress? Well, we'll get through at least this year. We, we do need more money, but we don't just need more money for vaccines for children eventually. We need more money to plan for the second pandemic. There's going to be another pandemic. We have to think ahead. And that's not something the last outfit did very well. That's something we've been doing for fairly well. That's why we need the money. Thank you, President, you all. I have a few tips, sir. Um, President Minister Boris Johnson said recently there's Ukraine fatigue. Uh, there are some leaders who are calling for negotiations with, with Putin. Are you afraid that there's a fracture within this alliance that, that, that you said has been united so far? No, I'm not afraid. But what I do think is there at some point this is uh, going to be a bit of a waiting game what the Russians can sustain and what Europe is going to be prepared to sustain. 
And uh, I think we have to. That's one of the things we're going to be speaking at uh, in Spain about. Thank you all so very, very much. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you.